it's not about having the answer or coming to the end point. I don't know the answer, but I've got that hope and excitement and can always improve. And I think that that mindset shift from the idea that we're going to solve this problem, we're going to find the answer to the idea that the work is ongoing. It's not about coming to an end point, but I have a process. I have a way to lean in with creativity, with hope and excitement to continue to improve the situation. And I think that is that is very connected to these kinds of very uncertain and ambiguous challenges that we're all facing at the moment. So at the D School, we often talk about the, the kind of design that we teach as really being a relationship between problem solving, which folks from many fields and many disciplines have um, brilliant ways to lean into problem solving, and problem finding, which I think is one of the rarer things that design really offers. So when you're in the problem solving mode, you're rapidly experimenting, you're trying a bunch of different prototypes and testing them, you're getting feedback, you're communicating about your vision for what the future looks like with your, your solution or your, your offering in, in, the, in the world. Um, and when you're problem finding, you're really stopping yourself from rushing too quickly into the problem solving. You're talking to people, you're observing them in context, you're, you're connecting the dots, you're finding new patterns, you're seeing things that others may not have noticed. And you're actually spending time to take all those concrete observations about the world that you're making and abstract into a new problem framing, a reframe in some cases. And in, at the D School, we have our students deliberately spend more time in problem finding, really more time in problem finding than they are comfortable with, because it's actually quite uncomfortable often when you still don't know what's the direction that I'm headed in, what's the thing that I'm actually gonna solve for. But that is actually where you start to learn how to navigate ambiguity. When we as the faculty do not constrain the problem space or rush the students right into problem solving, but instead make them go investigate the situation for themselves, we allow them, we invite ambiguity into the problem solving process and we really emphasize the skills around not rushing to closure, not rushing to, to you know, fix the first thing that you see as the problem. And that ability to stop yourself from that very human instinct to kind of get to clarity quickly allows you to see things that others haven't observed before, to connect those dots, as I said, in new and novel ways. And often that's where the most innovative solutions start to come from because you have reframed the, the problem itself. 